Your heart is the is the soul of you. And your soul has, has a room in it that no one can occupy but God. It's called the throne room of your heart. Before Jesus came into your life, you were sitting on a throne. When Jesus came into your heart, he began to sit on the throne of your soul. Your soul makes you aware of you. Your spirit makes you aware of God. And your body makes you aware of your environment. Body, mind, and spirit. So your body is the temple of the spirit. Your body is smart enough to tell you when it's burning, when it's freezing, when it's hungry, when it's thirsty, when it's tired, when it's ready and refreshed, and when it's ready to keep the money. It'll tell you. <laughs> of self. Your, your soul is the self awareness. You, yeah. That's your soul, your heart. That aware of you are, your soul, your, your emotions, your will, and so on. Your your spirit is your is the is the awareness of God, and only your spirit can be alive after you die. It's your spirit. Now they're closely related, but like I say, they have different functions. How do you know that Paul said, a soul that sinneth shall surely die, and he is dead, or she is dead, while she lives, or he lives. And so the soul is alive, you're aware of self, and your body is aware of its environment, but it is dead. Your spirit is dead to God. But when you become born again, you become alive to God. Your spirit's been born again. It's not your soul that's been born again. It's your spirit that's been born again. So understand this tonight, that when your heart has you on the throne of it, you do it your way. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. We have, but can I tell you a little something? And I would, I would that Christians be aware of this. Your biggest problem is not Satan. Your biggest problem is you. That's right. And if we could just get off the throne of self-determination and, de and determine in our hearts that we want to let him govern. Paul said, it is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. That means it's no longer I that governs. It's Christ that governs. It's no longer I that determines my destiny and my future and my activities and my life as a journey of life. It is Christ that lives out himself in through me. So he has abdicated the throne of his own soul and heart and has surrendered what's that uh, when they come in to the Senate and the House uh, these armed the, uh, walks in with a scepter, a scepter. yes we have to surrender the scepter of our heart to Jesus. Let's just for argument's sake call this the scepter. The scepter is a symbol of authority. The scepter is a symbol of lordship, position. And we hold the scepter those who are in the military know what the line of authority is. And the one that holds the scepter is the one that has the authority. The house speaker comes, he has the authority of the house, he has the scepter. And so the scepter of our life, of our heart, needs to be handed over to Jesus.
for him to have the authority of our heart and soul. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he holds a scepter. Your life is not your own. Paul said you were bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore glorify God in your body, in your soul, and in your spirit. That's what it is. Because you're purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. So take the scepter, give it over to him. Now that he has it, he has the authority to govern it, to rule over it, to have complete dominance, and to do with as he chooses. Because we are now no longer living to ourselves. Paul said, I'm a slave to Jesus Christ. I knew what he said. So the heart or the soul is self-aware. It is your will. It is your capacity to choose what you want to do. Your emotional construct, that's all part of your soul. Your affection, your anger, all of these things. All that's part of you that has to be surrendered to Him when Jesus comes in. Then your spirit becomes alive, and then your spirit becomes aware of God. So that's why Paul said, I keep watch my body under jurisdiction or under subjection to my spirit which is under subjection to Christ. So now I have given my mind, my intellect, my reason, my capacity to discern. All of this is under the authority of the Holy Spirit. So, anyways, I've given, I've given a bit of an expose on all this tonight. So your body is aware of its environment, your soul is aware of yourself, and your spirit is aware of God. So where is, in other words, he said, I will write in the inner parts, I will write, see, see what I say, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Your inward parts and your heart is really the entire makeup of who you are. Your body, your mind, your soul and spirit, all the entirety of it. I'm going to write it there. Now watch. And will be their God. You, you see how that when God writes something in you, He becomes the authority. When God writes something in you, He is the governor. When God writes something in you, is to glorify Him. What God writes in us will ultimately bring glory to Him at His coming. He said, I will be their God and they shall be my people. When God writes something in you, there's always conciliation. There's always reconciliation. There's always a coming together. That pen has to say hello to that sheet of paper. And that sheet of paper has to say, come on down. Do your thing. Verse 34 is very important. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, no Lord. For they shall all know me. Know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin. No, somebody shall praise the Lord. So, let's get it down to the brass tacks here now. Known and read of all men, what happens when he writes, he becomes the authority, right? I will be their God and be my people. There's not a divine factor there. And they shall teach no more their, their neighbor. In other words, I, I've seen this in the past, probably the last 60, 60 years, but I've seen this more in the past 50, 60 years, more than ever before my parents and all that kind of stuff. That people run to and fro with itching ears, trying to get the play of the day. Well, let's go to Tulsa. 
They're building a prayer tower. Let's go to Dallas. Let's go to Oklahoma. Let's go to New York where big things are happening. Let's go to L.A. Poor chap. Let's, let's go to television evangelist so-and-so. Let's go to television pastor so-and-so. Let's, let's, let's see what God is. He said, no, 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 no. They shall teach. No, 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 no. Jesus said what about his sheep? My sheep know my voice, and they follow me. In the Old Testament, in Jeremiah, it was, it was always looking for a prophet for to be told about God. That's why Jeremiah said, those days are going to be ending. Those days are going to end. Because every single boy and girl, every mom and dad, every woman and man shall know me. And they will need to run to Tom, Dick, and Harry. What does God say? I, I, how many times we've heard preachers say, well, what do you think God's saying today? What are you asking me? If you don't know what God's saying today, goodness gracious, check your pulse, man. What's God writing in you? You know what? I've been gone for three days. Do you know how bad I want to be here tonight? This is what God's writing. You know what God's been writing in my heart for the past 17 years? Calvary Community Church. That's exactly what God's been writing in my heart. I've had no other interests. No other desire. I've had no other drawing, compulsion. There's nothing I would rather do than what I'm doing today. I was busy with these people. Do you know how much information my poor brain had to put up with? In the last three days? You, you get a three-day course on a guy who's been a, a, a lawyer for 50 years. i got to learn in the three days what you, you've been learning for 50 years? What, what am I, a robot here? Just push buttons? I can't, I can't. And I'm trying to push them. I said, thank God I'm called a preacher not to be an attorney. Thank you. <laughs> you, I, and I told the jurors after that when it was all done, I said, thank God. I'm not a judge or an attorney. I'm not, that's not my calling. If you want to talk God and his word, I'm with you. You can have this all day long. I'm out of my I don't like being out of my element, okay? I want to be in my element. This is what God's been writing in my life. Diane, Stephanie, Sharon, the children. That's what God's been writing in my life. There's no other thing I'd rather be doing. There's no other place I'd rather be. So he's saying, now, no more a man will teach his neighbor, nor will you run to your neighbor to find out as the prophet. Let's go find out what prophet so-and-so has to say what God's speaking today. Let's find out what prophetess is saying so on and so forth, what God is saying today. Pastor Stephen showed me on his telephone today uh, a pastor, a very prominent pastor, huge audience, huge audience. And I literally saw him come down from his throne and start pointing fingers at some of the people in this church. And you, he said, you were there, he called him my name. He said, you are not worth 15 cents to me or this church. You're probably my worst member. You're not. You're worth less than 15 cents. He said, stand up, big boy. You know I love you, don't you? Uh, what? What? You just embarrassed me before the world? This was television. You embarrassed me before the world? You're telling me you love me? And you back there, they start calling out me. And I'm not talking to you, lady. And you better start paying your tithes better than what you've been doing. I'm talking about your son. He's old enough to be dealt with. He said they're building their kingdom in the sound room. He said that's going to be finishing here today. And he tore into a bunch of people in his church like that. He said if you don't like it, I'm going to shut the place down, take my glad rags, and move down the road, and start another church. Uh, yeah. Adios, amigos. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you know, you know what, uh, 
the, the, the preaching of the word has to be done with a sense of compassion. If you don't have compassion for people, if they each needed personal correction, you do it personally. You do not call people's names out in public and on screen. And we're talking about being televised here. This was recorded. That's how he got it. And now they're having praise dance teams. You know how all that things going on about the praise and all that kind of stuff and dance teams and stuff like this? And they're wearing what? Tight, tight high shoes. You think it's go-go dancing in the middle of the church to attract the sensuality of it. How many understand that is a far cry? That's not what God is writing today. And people are running and flocking to that kind of stuff. People being beaten up by pastors verbally, insulted in front of everybody else, and they run to those places. How, do you understand? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. No one is, he said, there's going to come a time when no man is going because every man will know the Lord. From the greatest of them to the least of them, said the Lord, for I will forgive them. You see, when you have your sins forgiven and they are thrown into the sea of forgetfulness, there is a sweet relationship that takes place with God. Then Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. People who stay in pastorates who go through this type of horrendous harassment and moral abuse, spiritual abuse like this, are not hearing from the Lord. They're looking for him to be their guru, their tyrannical boss, spiritual boss. And I want to tell you tonight that God is writing something in your life. You need to be looking for it. You need to be able to identify it and glorify God with it. And then when you think you have found it, make sure you're able to identify it by how it's manifest. How it manifests itself. How do you know? Well, Jesus said it's in the pudding. Every tree is known by its fruits. In other words, I can see the hand of God being written in me because I see manifest evidence. And then to really confirm what you feel that God has been writing in your heart, who has recognized it? Who has identified it and spotted it just like you think you have? And when it's confirmed by others, the things that God has done in your heart, then you can say, truly, that's what God has written in my life. Yes, it feels so good when, when, when what you feel that God has done in your heart has been validated. The, the growth, that step, that extra inch that you grew in the Lord. So what is God writing in your heart? i got to stop now and go on that. I've been out of my element for three days, so don't tempt me. I'm ready to go home with this. But let me, let me give you at least one more scripture home. I was going to take you to Matthew 5, but I'm going to hold off on that. Hebrews 8.10. If you can find out Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10, I'm going to close it there for tonight. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. And what do we have up there? For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law into their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be my, my people. That's what we just read from the Hebrews. We just now read it, remember, a few moments ago from Jeremiah 31. This is confirmation of it in the New Testament. Okay, that locks it up. So, look introspectively and see what God is writing in your heart. Does it look like Jesus? Does it sound like Jesus? Because the quest that we are endeavoring right now, that we're attempting, is to be like Jesus. That's what we are about. Amen. Give the Lord a good time.
comment about this session before we discuss this time. Is this like another um, series that you're doing? No, it's still on um, what I said, an inward, okay. an outward evidence of an inward work of grace. But that is the series. That is the series. Okay. This falls under that series. And this is something that I have put together. It's not something I've read in a book somewhere, picked up on a computer somewhere in the internet, somewhere in cyberspace. This is this is what God's writing in. There you go. That's so what you're getting here tonight. This is fresh writing on the fresh pad here. <laughs> and I can feel it too. I, you'll find from me, if you don't know it by now, that I am not a, uh, a covered preacher. But I go through the covers and I see, oh, I preached that about 20 years ago. That I might do that one, I might do this one. I'd pick out a can out of the cover and try to preach that. You'll find that that's not me. If I'm not speaking to you, thus saith the Lord, today, for today, fresh from the heart and the mouth of God, I have no business being in front of you. I've been talking to me for an hour, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means? That God's been to me. And, and that means that the Lord, what he has put on my heart, these last three questions only came about at about 4.30 this afternoon. They were spontaneous from about 4.30 this afternoon. And I had to quickly write them down on a little yellow piece of paper. Huh? I couldn't get the bulletin finished until I had the second bulletin. <laughs> And, and so you see, and see how valuable that is. Because I've been preaching for an hour to him, and, and I'm sure that maybe he's about spoken to a, a, a number of others. But uh, and just enjoy it, and receive it, and start looking. Make this your your homework between now and next Wednesday night. And if you can come next Wednesday night and say, Pastor, I've been able to identify by evidence. And by someone else's confirmation of the same. Check it out. And if you don't get that often enough, you will get stable in your walking journey with Christ. You, your experience with Him will stagnate, and you don't want it to be bad. Right? Amen. You still love Him. Amen. I didn't beat you up too bad tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call anybody out. 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 That would have been the last servant preached here alive. Diane would have been the perpetrator. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you know what's exciting about this? It may, it may sharpen our thinking about where we are with the Lord and our walking journey. But it's not a condemning <clears throat> approach. It is one that is giving opportunity to be able to ameliorate. You know what the word ameliorate means? Improve. Ameliorate means to improve. Sometimes I take out these 36 dollars words. And Why don't you say improve? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you say improve? 